To be able to make modifications in Revit, we need the ability to select on objects. Here are a few different methods to be able to make those object selections. The first one is kind of obvious. All you have to do is move your mouse over to the object that you want to be able to select, highlight over it, and when you see it turn blue, left click in order to be able to select it. Now you can do the same thing if you have a group of objects that are currently touching each other. And in this case, I'm just going to click here in space in order to deselect this object. But if I wanted to just pick this object, just move the mouse over, highlight it, click, and then it's selected. If I wanted to be able to select multiple objects at the same time, you can actually use the same method. The only thing you'll need to do first, though, is be able to hold down the control key on your keyboard. If you move your mouse over, hold down the control key, click on an object. In fact, I'll even click on this object over here. You can see that you can select multiple objects at the same time just by click, 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 and holding down your control key. If you want to be able to select this entire strain of objects, any objects that are touching each other, that are kind of joining together at the same spot, you can do that too. And in order to do that, you just move your mouse up until one of those pieces in that grouping is highlighted. Now, I haven't actually clicked on this yet. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the Tab key on the keyboard. And by selecting Tab, it'll automatically highlight everything that's in that string of objects. Once it's highlighted, go ahead and click in order to be able to select it. One of the most common mistakes is that people move their mouse over, they'll hit tab, they'll get what they want, and then they'll go and retouch their mouse again, and then they'll accidentally unhighlight it all. So you always need to be careful and always keep your mouse on the objects that you want to be able to highlight, hit tab, and then do your selection. So that's one way to be able to grab onto a grouping of different objects. Another way is to do what's called a crossing window. There's actually two different types of windows. There's a normal regular window, and then there's a crossing window. The regular window works like this, where if you move your mouse over here somewhere on your screen, click and hold down, and move over in this direction, and this is the regular window. And you can see how these lines in this box that's showing up on the screen are nice and solid. Now, whenever you see the solid lines in the box, it means anything inside of that box is what will get selected when you let go of the button. Now, I'm going to hit Escape a couple of times just to make sure that I'm no longer selecting on this. Now, if I want to be able to select anything that's touching the box, this is where I can use that crossing window. So you can just click somewhere in space, hold the mouse button down. In this case, you'll see that I have dash lines for my box. Whenever you get the dash lines, that means anything that's touching the box will automatically get selected. For this one beam I'm about ready to touch up here, you'll see it automatically highlight blue the second that box touches it. So using this method, I can select on multiple objects at the same time. And that same process works as well if we're dealing with things like down here, where we have multiple objects on different elevations. I can click, hold my mouse button down, and then just sort of move in this direction. And you can see that anything that's touched inside of this box is now highlighted. And if I let go of the mouse button, it'll automatically get selected so it can be edited. One other thing that you can do is if there's a specific grouping of kinds of things that you want to be able to select. For instance, if I wanted to be able to select all these different beams, I could do that. To do this, all you have to do is select on one of your beams, right-click after it's been selected, and there's an option here that says Select All Instances. And usually you want to choose Visible in View. If you do Visible in View, it'll pick all those that you can see inside of your view. The other option that was there would be as you right-clicked, selected all instances again, and did an entire project, just realize that even if it's not visible in your view, it'll still select those entities, which is sometimes a good thing and sometimes a bad thing. It's a good thing if you want to be able to select everything inside of your entire project that's just like the one that you had selected right here. It's a bad thing if you did this with a piece of text or notes or dimensions, because if you did this for an entire project and then hit the delete key, it would automatically delete not just the ones in your view, it would automatically delete them throughout your entire project. And I've seen that done with people who are doing text and dimensions before. They've selected them throughout the entire project, not realizing they didn't do it for the entire view, hit delete, and then they lost all their notes and details and anything related to that kind of piece of text throughout the entire project. So thing to remember is that whenever you're going to be selecting on things, always make sure you know what it is that you're highlighting over. Remember that you can click in order to be able to select on an object. Also remember that you can do such things as hitting tab to select multiple objects. You can window around things in order to be able to select them. 
And of course, you also have the ability to right click and select all instances, and it can either be visible in view or throughout the entire project.